Oh, you're a boy, right? No. I'm a girl. Who told you you're a girl? Mommy. <clears throat> When did she tell you you were a girl? Because I love girls. Oh, I see. So mommy told you you were a girl? And welcome to Weird Health News with the E Z E N W A N Y I dot com. Yes, the Queen Boo. Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today, we're tackling a serious and complex topic Munchausen syndrome by proxy, or MSBP. This is a disorder where a caregiver fabricates or induces illness in someone under their care, often to gain attention or sympathy. We'll explore the history, symptoms, psychology, and impact of this disorder, as well as how it can be detected and treated. Let's dive in. Historical Background Munchausen syndrome by proxy was first described in the medical literature in 1977 by Dr. Roy Meadow, a British pediatrician. The name is derived from Munchausen syndrome, where individuals feign illness in themselves. In MSBP, the caregiver, usually a parent, fabricates or induces illness in a child or dependent. Early case studies documented caregivers who would go to great lengths to convince medical professionals that their children were sick. This included tampering with medical samples, administering harmful substances, and exaggerating symptoms. The caregivers often appeared very devoted, gaining sympathy and admiration from those around them. Symptoms and Characteristics Let's look at the symptoms and characteristics of MSBP. This disorder is complex and can manifest in various ways. Common signs include frequent hospital visits, inconsistent medical histories, symptoms that only appear in the presence of the caregiver, and the child's condition improving when separated from the caregiver. Caregivers with MSBP often have a deep knowledge of medical terms and procedures. They may exaggerate, fabricate, or even induce symptoms in their child. This can involve poisoning, withholding food, or inflicting injuries. The primary motive is to gain attention, sympathy, and validation from medical professionals and others. Psychological Aspects and Motives Munchausen syndrome by proxy is driven by complex psychological factors. Caregivers with this disorder often have a history of abuse, neglect, or trauma. They may struggle with low self-esteem, feelings of inadequacy, or a need for control. By inducing illness in their child, they fulfill a psychological need for attention and validation. Understanding the psychological underpinnings is crucial. These caregivers are not simply seeking attention, they are driven by deep-seated emotional issues. This makes the disorder particularly challenging to diagnose and treat. Diagnosis and Detection Diagnosing MSBP requires a multidisciplinary approach. It involves careful observation, thorough medical history reviews, and sometimes covert surveillance. Medical professionals must look for patterns of unexplained illnesses, discrepancies in medical records, and improvement of the child's health when separated from the caregiver. Key warning signs include frequent hospitalizations, a lack of clear diagnosis despite numerous tests, symptoms that don't match typical disease patterns, and overly attentive caregivers who seem more invested in the illness than in the child's overall well-being. Legal and Ethical Considerations Munchausen syndrome by proxy cases pose significant legal and ethical challenges. Removing a child from their caregiver requires clear evidence of abuse, and these cases often involve extensive investigations. Legal authorities must balance the need to protect the child with the rights of the caregiver. Ethical considerations also come into play. Medical professionals must navigate patient confidentiality while ensuring the child's safety. Reporting suspected cases of MSBP is a critical, yet delicate process. Treatment and Support Treating MSBP involves addressing both the caregiver and the victim. The caregiver needs intensive psychological therapy to address underlying issues. The child requires support to recover from the physical and emotional trauma. Family therapy can also be beneficial if reunification is an option. Treatment options may include individual therapy, family therapy, and sometimes medication for underlying mental health conditions. Support groups and community resources play a vital role in recovery and prevention. Prevention and Awareness 
Raising awareness about MSBP is crucial. Educating medical professionals, teachers, and the community can help identify and prevent cases. Training programs and workshops can equip people with the knowledge to recognize the signs and take appropriate action. Prevention efforts also involve supporting at-risk families. Providing resources for mental health support, parenting education, and stress management can reduce the risk of MSBP developing in the first place. Oh, you're a boy, right? No. I'm a girl. Who told you you were a girl? Mommy. <clears throat> when did she tell you you were a girl? Because I love girls. Oh, I see. So mommy told you you were a girl? Uh-huh. Um, does mommy um, do anything else like with a girl with you? Mm-hmm. Like what? Like chesses. What, what does she do? She do... Comes in on me. She puts dresses on you. Oh wow! And what else does she do? She buys my headbands. Uh huh. And she, and <clears throat> and she gets me hair clips. Oh, hair clips. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Some microphones. What else? Like a skeleton. Does she do anything with your fingers? Yeah. What? She paints my nails. So that, why does she do that? Because I love my nail polish. Oh. So mommy puts you in a dress and puts nail polish on you? Mm -hmm. And And what does mommy tell you? She tells me I'm a girl. Oh, okay. Do you think you're a girl? Uh-huh. You do? Is that why you wear this? So that you can have long hair? Mm-hmm. Okay. One of my earliest memories was actually a nice one. I was sitting on my mom's lap. My dad was driving the car. She was brushing my hair very lovingly. And I was rummaging through her purse. And she asked me, are you looking for the suckers? And she pulled out the pack of suckers. And I took one out like I always had. And I sucked on the sucker and I crunched it up and swallowed it. And I wouldn't realize it until much later that the suckers were actually a book of matches that my mom had been giving me as candy. My mom and I were really enmeshed. I really didn't have a lot of independence from her. From a really early age, she would take me to doctors and she would say there was something wrong with me. She would just sort of get one medication from one doctor and then another medication from a different one. She was reading books on what medications not to combine to get those medications for me. And in essence, by making me take them, she was making me sick early on. Later, it kind of made sense. Very shortly before we had this doctor's appointment, my mom had come in that evening and she had a gun. She sat on the edge of my bed and she put the gun in her mouth. She started sobbing about how she was shocked sexually when she was a little girl. As an adult, you can see that she was just replaying out on me what had happened to her. And then shortly to follow that, she's taking me to the doctor, pursuing what she thought would be unnecessary open heart surgery. Age 14, she got me checked into a hospital. No one had really told me what I was there for. A nurse walks in, she says she has to shave me. I need to shave your private areas. I just sprung to the back of that bed. I pulled the covers up and I just blurted out, my mom is making this up. I'm not sick. And she drugged me and um, she shaved me. When I was in the surgery room, I was awake the whole time and the doctor came in, he had a scalpel and they cut my arm and it just sort of filleted itself like a chicken breast. And they took an electrical wire and they ran it into the vein or the artery and they sneaked it up into my heart. I just did everything I could to clamor off that table. I jerked my legs up, jerked my arms up, ripped out the thing. They drugged me. That was it. Coming home, I was just, I was probably inconsolable. And I think that at that point, I looked at my mom and probably for the first time just felt a little flash of hatred for her.
thank you for joining us as we explored the complexities of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. It's a challenging and often heartbreaking disorder, but with awareness, early detection, and comprehensive support, we can make a difference. If you found this video informative, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more in-depth discussions on important health topics. See you next time! What do you think about this video? Have you heard of this? Have you or anyone you know experienced this? Let me know in the comments below! Remember to sit high with confidence, rooted on your throne, with strength built from pain not forgotten. If you liked the video, like, subscribe, and hit that bell to receive notifications of when we upload a new video. Also, check out our merch at ezinwanyi.com.